oh, well, we just, it, it was nothing. Today, you can't disagree with somebody on a, on a, on a I parking mean, violation. No. And, uh, they the following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. By tomorrow, I will rule the world! <laughs> You think he's gone? He's not gone. That's the whole point. He's never gone. Is this some radical new therapy? You see? Hey, I like it. Oh, well, I must have not been paying attention when you were just talking to me. I'd give real money to hit Mark DeSalvo do the Papa Paz. <laughs> he has hidden talents, I understand. Let's see if we can get this on some of the North End of a pages, too. So. Share to a group. Why wouldn't it let me do that? Let's try this. Melvin Taylor seems to be doing better, by the way, Chrissy. So I think he's going to be doing another live show soon. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. We definitely need to go see him. Absolutely. We'll go around. Support. Why can't I share to a group for some reason? I don't know. Facebook, man. They changed it again. It's just so mad. Uh-huh. It's like once a week. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. You're paying rights for this music, of course, right, Tom? Um, we actually have the rights to this oh, song. Oh, good. Because he wrote it for the show. No kidding. Yeah, he yeah. wrote it for the show, then he put it on an album, and then he came, and he didn't tell me. And he came on the show with his guitar one day and said, hey, I want to surprise you with something. And he handed me the album, and then he played the song and said, That's I wrote this for your show. Yeah. That's, That's pretty fantastic. good. He's the best. Come the Baba Paz. Baba Paz. Hey. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> that's awesome. I appreciate it. You know what? We can just end the show now. Yeah, that, that's it. All, that made it all worth it. Happy to oblige. Trying to get this up on some of the North End of a forum pages. And... It's driving me out of my mind. All right. I think we got some of them anyway. Spare me. <laughs> wow, twice in a row. we got to start the show now. All right. How does it get any better than this? Hi, how you guys doing? My name's Tom Duggan. Anyone at the Paying Attention Podcast. Hi, top Two guys, Smoke Shop at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. Now, I'm always leery about doing a show like this because it only focuses on one town. Like, when we focus only on Methuen, it's good because a lot of Methuen people watch us. But a lot of the Methuen people, uh, the longest people don't kind of watch. And then the end of it, people, they're kind of like in their own bubble. Um, and so I always try to like diversify the show, but today is going to be about the North Andover Town Meeting. And a lot of people don't know what town meeting is, so if you're from Lawrence or Haverhill or Methuen or, or you're up in New Hampshire in a city, you really should pay attention to this show because we want to educate people as to what town meeting is. And when I first moved to North Andover some 23 years ago, um, I didn't know what town meeting was, even though I was kind of like a news guy and knew a lot of stuff about what was going on with our local government. And when I went to my first town meeting, I was amazed at how this was really the purest form of democracy in our country. And so I want to talk, we're going to talk a little bit with uh, town moderator Mark DeSalvo, who is here today, about the process of town meeting. And we're also going to talk about some of the things on the town meeting warrant, which is like if you watch your city council meeting, they have, an, they have item agenda, agenda items. And then they'll talk about each item, and someone will make a motion to maybe change it, uh, make an amendment, and then someone will make a motion to pass it, and then everybody will vote. Well, town meeting is like everyone's a city councilor. Everyone in the audience gets a chance to get up and make an amendment. Everybody gets a chance to, um, to maybe strike an item down or to add an item to the agenda. And if everybody in the room agrees, or the majority in the room agrees, um, then, then that will pass. Uh, so we want to talk about some of the warrant items and we're not going to really talk about opinion, although I'll, I'll throw mine in once in a while because I know that that's what you guys Well, it's impossible for you not to do right, that. Yeah, and that's what my audience expects anyway, right? Um, but I have to tell you, Mark DeSalvo, he's a partisan Democrat, 
and he's somebody that I did not vote for the first time he ran for town moderator. I voted for Frank McMillan, um, Dr. Frank, who's my doctor, by the way. Um, and then after he got elected, I showed up at town meeting, and I watched how Mark, and I know all my conservative friends are going to hate this, but it's, it's the truth, and you guys, need to, you guys need to swallow it because it's the truth. Mark DeSalvo had did, has done a phenomenal job as our town moderator, and I don't mind saying that. I voted for you. At, at, I didn't vote for you the first time. I've voted for you since then um, because I watched how you brought innovation into town meeting, how you tried to make it more inclusive for people, how you tried to make it easier for people to go through the business of, of the town. And, and I think you've been far more transparent than a lot of people thought you were going to be, given that you're a partisan Democrat. I think a lot of people like me voted against you the first time you ran because we thought you were going to bring your partisan Democrat hackery, for lack of a better word, <laughs> to the job of town moderator. And you've kind of done that by putting a lot of liberals on a lot of boards. And that, and, and that you know, is a whole separate subject. But as the town moderator who runs town meeting... I can't think of anybody who could do a better job than what you've already done. And I want to thank you for that because, well, again, we don't agree on a lot of stuff, but I judge people based on their performance. And your performance has been stellar. Well, I truly appreciate it, Tom. You know, there's no Democrat or Republican. There's no conservative or liberal way of running a town meeting. There's only a fair, open, and efficient way of doing a town meeting. And it's really easy to be efficient if you're not fair. That's why fair comes first. Right. Everybody deserves to have the opportunity to express an opinion. Everybody has the opportunity to feel comfortable about the uh, ability to express an opinion. And this is the most important part. The folks who come to town meeting change immediately from residents and citizens to legislators. Mm -hmm. Town meeting is the legislative body of the community of North Andover. We've been that way since 1646. Crazy. Town meeting is the longest active continuing body politic in the world of a singular type. And North Andover has been doing it every single year, multiple times sometimes, since 1646. And it's really true. Every vote counts, and every single person who attends town meeting has a voice. And an equal voice. It's Without not like, question. you know, it's not a lot, of, a lot of places claim they care about democracy, and it's really kind of a sham democracy because every vote really kind of doesn't count. You know, if I vote for Donald Trump and I live in Massachusetts, I'm wasting my vote because my vote's not counting. But a town meeting, every vote does count. Thomas Jefferson characterized town meeting and the tradition, and that's all it was at that time that the Constitution was being crafted, uh, uh, was a, a tradition of government and characterized it as the most efficient and the most important because of that ability for every citizen to have their voice heard. Mm -hmm. and, and every voice counts just as every vote counts. You've been to a few town meetings where you would anticipate, I've seen many over my 50 years of, uh, more than 50 years of attending town meetings, where somebody gets up, asks a question or makes a cogent comment, and it totally sweeps the room, right. changes everything. It's because the most important activity at town meeting isn't speaking, it's listening. Right that you owe your fellow citizens the opportunity to listen. It isn't a forum just for making statements. It's a forum for influence. Right. And that's what town meeting does. And I've gone to town meeting thinking that a vote was going to go one way, and all of a sudden, two-thirds of the room shifts. Yeah. Like, through the discussion, all of a sudden, everybody's going in a different way, and I'm like, holy crap, like the, um, the, the marijuana dispensary. Uh, I, I was against it, mm -hmm. but I went to town meeting expecting that that was going to pass mm -hmm. because North Andover has taken a hard left over the last, since you've become moderator. I don't I want to give you a little There's credit no for that. There's no correlation but, there. Well, actually there is, but that's another show. Um, but but, I, but I've seen, and, I, and I've th I was shocked when it went the other way because, again, as a conservative, but not a Republican, um, I was against it but walked in thinking I was going to get clobbered. I walked in thinking, you know what? This is going to pass. This is going to sail right through. And it started, that was like a, I think that was a three-night vote, right? Didn't they do that over two nights? No, we've they had... They did it, uh, they came we've, back? We've only had single-night uh, uh, town meetings since I became... I thought like we started no. the town meeting and then they had to come back. Maybe I'm just remembering it wrong. 
Um, well, we had almost 3,000 people at that town meeting yeah. and had it in the field house among yeah. all the other venues at the high school. And the, the entire um, um, warrant was essentially that one item. Mm -hmm. And in a couple of hours, we disposed of, uh, in this circumstance, right. uh, cannabis opportunities mm -hmm. in, in uh, North Andover. And that hurt North Andover financially. Perhaps. Um, but it doesn't really but seem it didn't like matter. it matter. Right, I was going to say it, but it didn't really seem like it mattered a whole lot. Well, no, it didn't matter that there may have been a, a financial hurt to it. What mattered was that the judgment was made in, you hope, a thoughtful and judicial manner so that people sat there and said, this is how I might feel about a specific issue. But it may affect generations to come, and I need to be at least reflective or considerate right. of that. And whether you agreed with the judgment that happens at town meeting, you can have some certainty that it is at least indicative of the body politic in that room. Because all that counts are the hundreds of people who happen to show up, sometimes thousands, but the hundreds of people who show up and they make all of the decisions. Right, now let me ask you a political question just for fun, even though- I may or may not choose to answer it. So, so isn't this kind of like a representation of white supremacy and the history of white people because town meetings started by white people and it was kind of fostered through like the Greek and Romans and it kind of came this way through our dem democratic process. Isn't that kind of like white supremacy? Like, isn't, aren't, we, aren't we stoking white supremacy through the history of, no? So the answer- Because I hear that from your party a lot. So the answer <laughs> is no. Okay. And notwithstanding what party I might happen to be affiliated with, it has nothing to do with town meeting. Town meeting is established by law, um, Massachusetts law, uh, but it, it started well before mm -hmm. Massachusetts law was actually created. Massachusetts didn't exist at the time the town meeting was crafted. It is entirely local for the benefits and interest of the people who live in that community. Right, we, got them on, we got them on record. The town meeting is not racist. So we, that, that's a good... I want to thank our sponsors, McLennan Real Estate, Century 21. We love Matt and all those guys. Yes, we do. And by the way, go on their Facebook page. They, they put up a lot of funny videos that kind of make you want to buy houses Matt and from the gang them. are very, very <laughs> funny. <laughs> and they're great people. I want to thank the Zany Pesci Law Office in... Methuen, we love uh, Vinny and Jaina. Jaina was our, our, our bash MC this year. Uh, she does a fantastic job. Yes, she uh, is. Marseille and Son Construction, EIS Investigation and Gun Training. Borelli's Deli, the new owners of Borelli were here last week with, uh, with Don Smeriglio. And one of the things that they started right away when they took over Borelli's on Monday is they started doing a sandwich of the day. It makes me want to go there every day now. I was going there once a week. And when they post it in the morning, this is our sandwich of the day. I'm like, damn, I got to go back again. It's, it's amazing. Uh, Tomo and Shaken Seafood, Clear Path for Veterans New England. A little update on our veteran, Jeff. We talked to Jeff last night. He showed up at TMF. He looked clean. And it's, it's, it's surprising to me, but he looked clean. And we're trying really hard to get him back to Clear Path. And I know he watches the show, and I know he's still on the street. But he's gotta, you got to go back, Jeff. you got to get in touch with us. We had a nice conversation last night. And he, he, he seems like he's starting to... He's starting to lean toward going back to rehab. And anytime we see a veteran on the street, it breaks my heart that we're spending all this money everywhere else in the world and we have homeless veterans. There's no, there shouldn't be such a thing as a homeless veteran in this country if you, if you go off and, and, uh, and service your country. But here it is, and we've got it. And I want to thank everybody at ClearPath for helping uh, to get Jeff the first time. And we're, he, they're still working with us to try and help him get him back into well, the rehab. Tom, if I might interject, sure. you have been, most particularly around this issue, a true stalwart relative to the simple humanity of caring for people who are in need. Well, thank you. That means a lot because I'm a, I'm a conservative and all I hear from a lot of people on Facebook is, is how I don't care about anybody because I'm a conservative and I'm an evil Nazi. It's so. demonstrative otherwise. So, but I, but I, I appreciate that coming from you because maybe they'll listen to you. They don't listen to me. <laughs> uh, AFC Urgent Care, we love Lisa. And by the way, I met with the mayor in Lawrence yesterday. They're working very hard to help Lisa uh, get her uh, billboard that she's looking for. And by the way, don't tell anybody. It's a secret. And I know my audience won't, tell, won't say anything. Um, but uh, I met with Mayor Brian DePina yesterday. Live TD is coming back. We're getting a scanner. We're going to go live again. So that's, that's phenomenal. Uh, I also want to thank David Consoli, Pleasant Valley Landscaping, and then a free shout-out to JG's Ice Cream and Sullivan Insurance. We love both of them. And the Doug Mercurio Law Office, as well as our good friend Paul Lambert. So we've got a bunch of things coming up on Town Warrant. How does something become a warrant item? How does something become 
on the agenda for town meeting? Very, very simple, and this is one of the powers of town meeting. First of all, you would anticipate that organizations like the select board or the school committee would have the opportunity to place an item on town meeting. But it also takes the whopping number of 10 citizens to petition the select board, and they are then required to put that item on the town meeting warrant. That's great. And this year we have, I think, five citizen petitions that cover a wide variety of issues uh, that are on our town meeting that will be determined exclusively without interference by the select board or the school committee or a planning board or any other uh, a body. While they might have an opinion and they'll express that opinion, it's only the people who attend town meeting, like yourself, who will have the opportunity to vote up or down mm -hmm. on those citizen petition articles. So simple, 10 registered so, voters. So That's if, I, it. if I want to change something in town, all I got to do is go out and get signatures from 10 of my fellow citizens in North Andover, submit it to town hall, it goes on the town warrant, and then everybody can get up and talk about it, debate it, discuss it, amend it, yep. and vote on it. It will either have um, um, uh, support or it won't. You might end up being embarrassed. You might end up being an icon. Right. Who knows? I've, I've done both. Well, I've, got, I've, got, I've gotten up and embarrassed myself, and I've gotten up and made some great points. But at the end of the day, it's, more, it's less about us looking good at the microphone and more about representative democracy expressing your ideas, and, and having the opportunity to express your ideas. One of the things that always annoyed me about city council meetings, no matter what town you're in, is they have what they call public participation, and they go, okay, but you got two minutes. Well, you know, how, do you, how do you express, if, you, if you're having a, a hard time with maybe an environmental issue in your neighborhood, or you've been beaten by a police officer, or you've got like a serious legitimate grievance that you want your town to, to address, how do you do that in two minutes? You, you can't. And then they can't do a back and forth. Like someone will get up at Methuen on Lawrence City Council meeting, speak for two minutes, and say, and I don't understand why you guys voted for this. And they can't answer back because it's not, it's not a discussion. It's just they get to speak for two minutes and then sit down. So town at, meeting, no, at town meeting, it's the exact opposite. Exactly. Town meeting is not a public participation effort or a public comment effort at a meeting. It is rather a declaration that we are going to speak about the four corners of this subject and anybody who has an opinion, who has a query, who has a better idea is welcome to express it at that time. Now, there are rules. You need to be courteous. To, you need to speak within the certain time limits and the like. You have to stay on the subject. You can't. But it's not two minutes, though. Like, you guys give them enough time to actually talk. Uh, well, each individual will have the opportunity to speak for a couple of minutes. But if you need to come back and express an opinion again, you need to follow up with an answer to a question, you need to raise another query, then you have that. Uh, right. There's no time, uh, cumulative time limit right. relative to that. And the body determines itself. Usually I can sense it. But the body determines itself. I think we're done with this issue. Let's move on. Let's have a vote right. one way or the other. And we've seen that. Sometimes people just beating a dead horse. They keep getting up, making the same point. And then it's up to the town moderator. And by the way, you've been very fair. I've watched you over the years. And I've seen people who are maybe don't share your political views get up and you know say some things that I know you probably didn't agree with. And people start you know, making comments in the audience. Hey, let's vote. Let's vote. And you're like, hey, hold on. Give them a chance to speak. And then once someone starts repeating themselves, then you'll say, hey, as the fair moderator, hey, listen, we've heard that. Does anybody have something new to discuss? And then if they don't, then you call a vote. That's exactly right. Yeah. I, I'm delighted that you've studied my uh, role and, and style here. I have because when I went to my first town meeting after you got elected, I expected a very different Mark DeSalvo. What did you expect? So, Well, I expected you to be a, a lot more partisan and a lot less fair. And because, because prior to that, you have been an activist. And you're, again, you're a partisan. At the time, I was a partisan. I was a Republican partisan. You were a Democrat partisan. And I was expecting you to get up and be more... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? You would lean more toward people who agreed with your political views and give them more time and less time for those who... Because in other communities, that's how it works. The Republican gets elected to town meeting and the liberals don't get a chance to speak as much as the conservatives do. And so I was kind of expecting that from you. And when I watched you at your very first town meeting, I walked out of there so impressed. That was the night I said, you know what? I'm voting for this guy the next time he runs. Like, I don't even care who runs against him at this point. That was truly impressive. And I think a lot of people who were conservative 
uh, Republicans who are in that partisan, we have to hate everybody that we don't. I think a lot of them walked out of their surprise too. They may not have said it out loud, but I think a lot of them walked out of their surprise. Well, well I appreciate it. Uh, uh, you know, there's no partisanship to the manner in which one keeps order. There's no partisanship to the manner in which you afford anybody who comes to a microphone. I don't select who those people are. They come to a microphone. The very fact that you're there gives you the authority and the presence and the right to speak. That's the joy of open town meeting. And you have to be a, a registered voter. Yeah, there's two conditions. Uh, number one, you need to be a, a, a resident and registered voter in the town of North Andover. And number two, you actually have to come to the meeting. Right. And you have to have the temerity. We think it's, a, I think it's a comfortable environment, but you have to have the temerity to get up to a microphone and express yourself. Right. That's it. So you brought a couple of, we want to get some warrant item, uh, items, but first you brought uh, some innovations. When you became, you had a lot, big, big shoes to fill with Charlie Salisbury. He was a great town moderator. Um, you came in and you st immediately started to implement um, some innovative ways that people could participate in town meeting that made it easier for the residents. Not so much easier for the insiders, which is what most people do when they get elected, but much easier for the, the residents themselves and the attendees of town meeting. Talk about some of those. Two or three significant ones. The first was that I, I required a declaration of conflict of interest. That anybody who gets up to a microphone and in any way is conflicted or has a family member that has a financial interest or other interest in the item that's being discussed, you have the requirement of relating that to the community. And if you choose not to, and I find out and I ask you to do so, that, and you don't, then you are accepted from speaking on that matter any, any longer. Because the community needs to know Absolutely. what people's motivations are. Full transparency. Without question. That's one. Number two, while all the power is in the room, because only people who are in the room have the opportunity to vote, not all knowledge happens to be in the room. Mm. And I instituted a circumstance, the first in the nation, whereby one can remote call in by question, by text, by email, a question, not a comment, not a motion, but a question. And on the basis of that question, I might have the opportunity to direct it to somebody who has an answer. And I have seen it now at least two times, a call in question from somebody who couldn't be in the room but is a citizen, changed the debate totally. That's why not all knowledge is in the room. Right. And my number one job, I'm not the speaker of the house, I'm the moderator. I don't have an opinion about each article. As a matter of fact, I sign an affidavit on an annual basis that says I have made no public declaration of my personal opinion on any article before town meeting. That's great. That's great. So do you want to talk a little bit about... Uh What's excuse me? What some of the warrant articles sure, are? Sure. All right. So let's talk about some of the. Excuse me. Too much coffee. Uh, it was, was that? It was that great sandwich from Borelli's. It was. The, it was Borelli's is fantastic. Uh, was there a prosciutto on it this uh, this time? I don't think so today. Oh, okay. Today it's the pastrami. Um, oh, that works. You know what it is? It's the pastr it's the pastrami Reuben sandwich. And I'm a big Reuben fan, so when I leave here, that's where I'm going. Um, so we have some citizen petitions. Uh, one comment on this. So I saw something posted on Facebook from one of the um, Board of Selectmen members, and I refuse to call it Select Board because I think it's just virtue signaling and silly. Um, <laughs> but, the, but one of the Selectmen posted online that a bunch of kids came in and they, and they submitted a, a citizen petition for town meeting, but didn't say what it was. And so I shared it, but I almost didn't share it because it's like, what am I sharing? It doesn't say what the petition is. So let's go through some of what the citizen petitions are. These are people that went out, they got the required signatures, they put it on the town warrant, and then we all get to vote on it come May 16th is the, uh, is the town meeting. 6.30 p.m. So Article 13, Citizen School. Petition, the William Sims Jr. Act. What is this? Do we know who William Sims Jr. No is? No idea who he William is. William Sims is the most heralded, excuse me, is the most consequential and unheralded patriot in America right now. Okay. And in um, 1788, the Andover, really North Andover, town meeting sent three individuals to the Constitutional Convention in Boston and instructed them to vote no on the adoption of the United States Constitution. Wow. Mr. Sims got there on the first day horse and carriage ride to Boston, 
uh, stayed in a rooming house for the several weeks that the convention took place. And on the first day, he got up in front of John Hancock, who was president of the Constitutional Convention, and related what his community had directed him to do and said that he agreed with that direction. Then he sat back and listened. The convention at that time was split literally down the middle, 50-50 to support or not support the United States Constitution in terms of ratification. Sims decided to get up and he announced that he had changed his mind. And it was that vote that broke the log, log jam, that opinion, widely, wildly heralded and widely published across the nation. It was that important. And Massachusetts, because of his temerity, became the sixth state to endorse, ratify the United States Constitution. And it was very, very clear that if Massachusetts had not ratified the Constitution, most of the other states, a sufficient number anyway, would not have even considered it. This group of eighth grade students who uh, were studying the Constitution in the North End of a Middle School decided that what happened to Sims after he returned was inappropriate. And I'll tell you what happened to him. He was ignored. He was shunned. His law practice was shuttered. He was literally driven out of town. And he left town, moved to Portland, Maine, and never returned. Wow. Wow. That's quite a story. Yeah. And they are asking the community to just to acknowledge that this, in fact, happened and to recognize that Mr. Sims deserved better treatment, if you will, by the community what? than that which he received in 1789. All right, so let me ask you this, because I, I, and it's just my personal opinion. It doesn't really mean anything to anybody. But having done this for so long, I always hate these things that have no substance to them. If this was a, a, a citizen petition to name something after him, mm -hmm. I would spearhead it. Mm -hmm. Like I'd write an editorial and I'd show up at town meeting and I'd, I'd, I'd knock on people's doors if I had to because it was substantive. But is there any of that substance to this or is this just like we're just going to publicly acknowledge? So this is a resolution that allows the acknowledgement of his story. And uh, to my mind's eye, it is at least a first step for the potential prospect of something about which you've just noticed. Right. I mean, if they want to name a park or a school or, or a square, something, that one would of, be much more substantive. One of the houses of North Andover Middle School, there are three of them, is named after William Sims. Okay, good. Um, uh, personally, I don't believe that that's enough for this unheralded but consequential person. And I never knew that story, so that's yeah. a great story. The next one is, boy, this is something that really just frosts me, but I, again, we're just going to talk about what it is. Um, uh, Article 14, citizen petition, ban on single-use disposable plastic bags. So there's a, an, an indiv a group of individuals supported by something called the North Andover Sustainability Committee which has some official sanction, so their opinion will be made known at town meeting. But they have, um, uh, have uh, uh, requested that plastic bags sold, or rather utilized in stores with more than 3,000 square feet. There happen to be, I believe, 60 of them in North Andover, would be banned at a certain date in the future from utilizing plastic bags. Uh -huh. There are other communities that have done this. Uh, it was considered, it was anticipated that this was going to come up in 2019, as a matter of fact, or rather post-2019 at the 2020 um, town meeting that we held outdoors because of COVID. COVID. And uh, they chose not to bring it up. And this year, that group of citizens is going to be arguing their case. And the number of people who come will make the judgment for our town. I'll, I'll be voting against it. Tewksbury tried that, and then during COVID, they went back on it because the science supposedly said that COVID clings to plastic more than it clings to paper, and so they've kind of done away with it. And by the way, for those at home, we only have plastic bags because the environmentalists, so-called, back in the 70s and the 80s, said we were cutting down too much of the rainforest. We were cutting too many trees. We're causing global warming. We need plastic bags. Now, you promised to be a good boy. I, I and, did, yes. And, and, I'm just giving them the history. Pollute, not I'm just giving them the, the history. Discussion. Um, Go ahead. All right, so the next one is uh, Article 15, Petition an act to amend town bylaws, annual town meeting. What is this one? Yeah, so there are two petitions about town meeting. Um, one of them by a citizen requesting that 
uh, should town meeting have to go to a second night or time period that every day of the week but Friday be included, but Sunday rather be included in that, including the prospect of Saturday mornings. We used to have Saturday morning town meeting, as a matter of fact, and then uh, defaulted to an evening in May. The second article about town meeting is a charter change, and our charter says the town meeting must happen at a certain Tuesday in May. And this request is to move that to the month of June in order to have what the petitioner hopes would be more participation from those people who are uh, college students, for instance, moving back to North Andover. All right, so we see what this is really all about, right? What is it about? Well, it's really all about just getting more people to vote liberal because young kids vote liberal. Are they? They I vote had, Democrat. I oh, yeah, they that. do. You know that. You know. But you, what's great about having Mark here is that he's not going to give us his opinion on this stuff. And that's great because we can actually focus on what the substance of this stuff is. Um, citizen petition, uh, petitioning the general court and act to amend the town meet charter. Is that the one you just gave me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the next one is citizen petition, humane pet shop ordinance. This one was actually kind of interesting. I read this last night. I think it might be for this, but we'll talk, tell us what it is. So why don't you tell the audience what it is? Well, it looks like it's saying that you can't sell puppies, you can't sell, and, though, and, and I'm a big rescue dog fan, right? One tail at a time in, in Boxford's been good to us. Um, Cynthia Sweet's been great to us down, and I think she's in Medford. Um, I'm a big fan of adopting dogs and not supporting dog breeders. And I think from what I read last night, this is going to stop the sale of pets in town. That's exactly right. Live animals would yeah. stop that sale. It would allow their display, would allow their adoption, uh, but it would not allow their sale or for anybody who was involved in an adoption or rescue circumstance that they could get no recompense from it. Now, is it this just businesses too, or can like a, if a person wants to sell their dog, that's I, okay, I, be, right? I believe it's businesses, those businesses that are registered. Now, some of those uh, AKC-oriented uh, entities are, in fact, businesses. I honestly don't know how it affects individuals in terms of that judgment. This was a petition, again, by a, a, a minor, somebody who was not a registered voter who, like the William Sims petition, uh, really started by a group of eighth graders. This is a high school student uh, who has decided that this is something that is important to her and was able to convince 10 registered voters to share her opinion, or at least the right to have this discussed. Right, right. And I think, I think it's a great issue, and I think I'm probably voting yes on that, not that anybody cares, but um, I'm a big fan of, of rescue dogs. And I see some of these puppy mills, and it's just the, the conditions are just horrible, and I'm not going to get into it. But uh, we have some financial articles. We've only got about seven minutes left. Uh, we've got some financial articles. Uh, w which is the most important financial article that you think? So there are really two of them. The first is our annual town budget. That's the principal policy document in our town. Our annual town budget this year is, care to hazard a guess? $480 million. No. $130 million. We are a very efficiently run All community. Right. And by the way, that, by the way, that doesn't even cover the Lawrence public school budget. The Just public to let you know. the public school budget is like two thirds of that 130 million. It's um, not including shared costs, about 60 million dollars. So that our 130 million budget, it's about up five percent uh, from last year. Uh, covers all of the things that our community has the responsibility of delivering, from schools to veteran services to fire and police and, and other emergency services and the like. And, uh, and that's what we'll be discussing. Uh, funnily enough, I suspect that we will have more conversation about any one of the five other items that we've just talked about right. than, they, than we will about $130 million. Right, and that's budget. probably the most important one. Yeah. 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 Well, at least it's important. Statutorily, it's important. It, it's, it needs to be uh, voted on and ratified prior to June 30th. So that's why uh, it's, uh, it, we principally have town meeting in the, in the month or the spring period that we do. Is there anything on the town warrant that increases development in town because it's killing us? The new developments, they're killing us. There are no articles, as I understand, in the Good. zoning part of the, of the warrant that has anything to do with a specific um, um, opportunity or development. or development. There are articles relative to the ease of which in which... Um, um, housing for a low and moderate income people might be built, but there's no approval process for any project, as right. I understand. One of the other things that uh, is a financial article that's important 
is our town's capital budget. That means what we put into buildings right. principally. And one of them is a $21 million article in order to put an, uh, an addition and renovation of our existing middle school. We need more space. That will in fact be done without override, no tax increase whatsoever, and also potentially without state aid, but we don't know yet at, mm -hmm. at the moment. We pray and hope that the state aid will uh, be made available to us for some of the building projects that right. have been on. Uh, it's, and it's anticipated that state aid will come, but we don't have a commitment at this moment. You know, one of the, one of the issues that Phil DiColagero pushed when he was here, and then, by the way, left our community the minute he was no longer an elected official, Phil. Well, um, I mean, Phil of the future. Phil of the future. Uh, Phil of the future has been a, a real contributor to our community. He has, but then he left. Um, and, that always as, and, and that always bothers me because people who say they love the town, and they probably still do, uh, they, they get in, they make all these changes, and they don't have to live with the changes that they made. But, one of the, but I brought him up because one of the things that he championed for a while that I thought was great for the town because it, makes it, it does make it immediately easier for people with less income to stay in town and not get priced out is in lower apartments. Mm -hmm. And I know we pushed that really hard. We never got it. Any chance we can get that back? Because there's a lot of people who are elderly that as to, maybe not even elderly, like our age, in their 50s, right? As they, as they get older. Thank you. I, I would like to be in my 50s. But you're not in your 50s? Uh, I thought you were like my age. How old am I? I figured you were like 56. I'm 69. No, no kidding. Wow, you're away from 70. Wow, I guess I've known this guy a lot longer than I thought. Like almost 50 years, my right. friend. Right, but you know, as people who are, who are you know, getting close to elderly age or who are elderly, you know, as prices of everything goes up, it gets harder for them to stay in town. And they may have a relative who lives in town that can build it in a lot of so they can stay in town. And right now, we don't have that. And yeah, we don't. It's not in this year's town right. meeting. I do anticipate, and I know that there's a group in, of... Uh, of folks in the community who share your interest and are asking our planning board and planning department to address that accessory unit kind of development circumstance. Right. Uh, and I would anticipate it'll come up at a future town meeting. I mean, they're building all these monstrosities of housing all over. They ought to at least be able to make it easier for people who will. So we got about three minutes on. Anything else on that? What's on that? What else is on the town warrant that we can educate people about that's going to be a big, a well, big the, drop? Well, the most important thing, there's really little about a draw here, and um, people come to town meeting for two reasons. Because they are just interested and they love the community and it's a, their tradition, or two, there's something controversial or something of personal interest, and that's why they come. Mm -hmm. My hope, and we, we see nothing enormously controversial, we won't have 3,000 people like we did relative to cannabis. We won't have near 2,000 people like we did relative to the Royal Crest matter mm -hmm. of just a year ago. Uh, but there will be several hundred, six, eight, nine hundred, perhaps more people at town meeting. Uh, I hope a very representative group of people who will sit back and recognize I'm a legislator. I am making consequential judgments for the be benefit of my community, the all 30,000 plus people in my community mm -hmm. who live here today and will live here in the future. That's a hell of a weight that you should have on your shoulders, which is why you want, you want to listen, you want to speak advisedly, and you want to vote appropriately with that good judgment while we enjoy a fair, open, and efficient town meeting. And there's a lot of people who put this town meeting together and volunteer their time for this town oh, meeting. And we, want to, we want to thank them because we've got a couple minutes left. And I see the, what, 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 I guess what you call the ward captains who do the counting. Yes. You have you know, people who are checking people in at the door, uh, I, I assume most of these people don't get paid. And then you've also got all the board members who sit up on stage and will say, you know, board of selectmen voted yes on this or voted no on this school committee zoning board, whatever. Um, they all deserve, they all deserve kudos for... Lots of community, lots and lots of community involvement just to pull off the town meeting on an operational basis, like the folks who will count a vote when mm -hmm. necessary, those folks who are checking people in to make sure that you're authorized to right. come into the meeting and express an opinion. And uh, there's all kinds of people around the technology, for instance. One of the things that we do that the town does is puts out a, a, a daily information guide about an article or a warrant article of the moment with the background so that you know what's going on in our community. What a, it's okay. all about transparency, information, the ability to discuss, 
and then making a judgment. And I will vouch for that, even though we don't agree on a lot of stuff. I'll tell you one thing that I want to put back on if I can't get it done through back channels is I used to get mailed one of these town warrants. And I'm not one, because, maybe because of my age, but I'm not someone who can read a lot of, vo- a lot of volume of text on a computer. My eyes start getting watery because I stare at a screen all day. I would have liked to have gotten one of these in the mail and been able to flip through it with a highlighter or a pen and circle things that I like or don't like and cross things out and, and put in questions. And the town stopped doing that. And I, I'm sure it was probably to, spe- to save money. That's exactly But right. my question is what price democracy? Yeah, it's exactly right. Uh, I would concur with you that if I had an opinion and I had the ability to be able to unilaterally determine that it'd be posted, I would like it to be posted to every household in the community, mm-hmm. whether you come to town meeting or not. Right. However, if it, this is available, the, um, the result of a whole lot of work of lots of individuals, it is available right now, uh, I believe in the town library and at our town clerk's office. I brought you I, uh, and I thank you for that benefit. because You're now I can welcome. actually go through it. And yep. this, this is, I mean, look at the volume of this. This is, I don't know if the pages are numbered, they but are. I think we're close to 100 pages here, we're, right? We're well in excess of 100 pages. Wow. Yeah, this, this is exactly 100, actually, at the very end. We're exactly 99, 100. Yep. So it's exactly 100 pages. That's a, lot of, that's a lot of volume to read on a computer. Yeah. So maybe we can work on that for the next time. Maybe I'll get 10 people to sign a petition and we'll put it on the town meeting put, and just you, say, hey. One, one can make that as an amendment to the town budget if one chose to Or do maybe so. we could even just say not to send it to everybody, but maybe if people want to sign up for a list so you're not wasting it sending it to people who don't, who don't want it. How about just having like a, people can go online, they can give their email with their address. and they can, Sounds I'm, like a future what? town you meeting know what? warrant. I, I might even make an amendment to this. Can you make an amendment to something on, and I know we're out of time, I'm sorry, Chrissy. Can we make an amendment to something on a current item that doesn't really have to do with that item, like how Congress does? Can I, can no. I get up at one of these saying, hey, can we just add this in? Um, there may be a way, and we can talk about this offline relative to that specific thing. And by the way, I advise all kinds of citizens who have queries, give me a ring. My home number is in the book, and it's on the website, as is my email. I'm very, very happy to talk to everybody. And I have conversations about people who have interest in amendments and advise them what's appropriate and what's not and how to structure that. And I also have a group of citizen advocates on the town meeting floor to help people in the moment actually structure that stuff. That's, that's amazing. Mark, is there anything else you want to uh, 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 impart on our viewers and listeners? Actually, we have way more listeners than viewers. I want to thank everybody of, uh, for this opportunity. Uh, I try to be an apostle for town meeting, and I'm delighted that, uh, that you believe it's important. And for those uh, cities and towns that are out there who don't take advantage of open town meeting, come and try it one of these days. Yeah. It truly is the closest thing to participatory democracy ever. And it's May 16th, and I would also encourage you, if you're not from North Andover, go, people can still go and, and observe, right? Well, you, Come to North observe. Andover Town Meeting and observe as a non-voter and see how real democracy works. You can watch it on television. You can watch it on a live stream. By the way, that live stream will be closed captioned in the room and outside of That's the room. That's good for guys for like me. For those people yeah. who might have a hearing impairment. I do, so I, I, I love closed caption. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors. First, I want to thank Mark DeSalvo for being here. I think it takes a, a lot of courage to come out here and no talk about these things, especially when, you know, but I, I'm, I'm kind of a controversial guy. I'm sure you're going to get as much crap for being here as I'm going to have get from I've, people I've, for having you here. We're so. pretty twinned as far as that's concerned. There's a real yin and yang to what you've just noted. Thank you. I want to thank our sponsors. We love our sponsors. By the way, I've got room for two sponsors. So uh, so if you're thinking of sponsoring the show, this is a good time to get in because I do cap it off. Uh, McLennan Real Estate Century 21, the Zany Pesci Law Office, JG's Ice Cream. Free shout out to them because I love the Jafrida brothers. They're just such good guys. Uh, Pleasant Valley Landscaping. Call Dave Id Consoli. He'll take care of you. AFC Urgent Care. Don't sit in the in the waiting room at Holy Family for four hours. Go to AFC. You're literally in and out in 15 minutes. Um, the Mercurial Law Office in North Reading. Give Doug a call if you have any legal issues. Clear Path for Veterans New England. <sighs> Tomo and Shake and Seafood. Borelli's Deli. EIS Investigation and Marsan and Sun Construction. Thank you, Chrissy, for letting us go over today. I know it's tough because you got a, a long day today, but I appreciate it. And, Mark, thank you so much for being here. Hopefully you come my back. It would be my delight to do so. And by the way, thank you for encouraging uh, your state representative to come do the debate here. Appreciate that. Melvin, sounds like Melvin Taylor says you got to go home. So go home already.
The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.